Forget the generic advice, you've heard it all. Learn Python, build a portfolio. The truth is that most applicants get stuck doing the same things. But what are the things that you really need to do to stand out from the 99% of applicants? The secret is not just what language you know or what projects you've worked on. Everyone's probably telling you what you should be doing to get a job, but today I'm going to tell you seven things that you should not be doing. And I'm especially excited about the last three. They might be a little controversial, but they're what really matters. So stay tuned and let's dive Stop underselling your achievements. That means don't just list all the responsibilities. Actually talk about your achievements with numbers and data. Did you increase the efficiency? Did you make something faster? Did you increase number of users? What are the tangible numbers that can back up your work? And if you're not sure how to do this, I have a book, The Ultimate Resume Handbook, with step-by-step -step guide to help you do this, so go check it out. I'll link it somewhere here. If you're working on personal projects with no actual users, you will probably have a hard time finding these numbers to back up your project. And that's why you should stop working on those projects that don't even run. YouTube is flooded with these videos like unfair projects to work on to get a job. As someone who's been a software engineering manager hiring engineers at Meta, both working in Silicon Valley and London, I can tell you nobody gives a shit about your projects that don't even run. Now let me explain. There's a difference between production level code and project code, which is kind of like the difference between driving in a video game and driving a race car. If you really want to work on projects that do matter, at least have real users using your website or app or whatever project that you're building, or work on open source projects with real users. In case you're wondering where I am, this is my usual daily walk. I happen to live around the San Francisco ballpark. I want to show you around the neighborhood, so come with me on my walk. Okay, back to my tips. Another question that I get all the time is, should I pursue AI or machine learning or software engineering? My tip is that you should stop thinking about which path is perfect for you. Try applying for all the roles that you're interested in and see which one you can land. The reason why you don't know what you want to do is because you haven't done it yet. So give it a shot, apply to all the jobs that interest you, see which one you can get in, and then decide. And I think a lot of times these questions come from a place of fear, which is, Related to my next tip, stop fearing failing interviews. When there are so many unknowns, I get it, it's scary and difficult. And oftentimes I do get questions from my coaching clients. Let me share a story. One time, one of my coaching clients came to me asking a question. After I helped her with her resume review, she landed a couple of interviews with big name tech companies. But she came to me and asked me, hey, like I haven't really prepared for the interviews, so I'm thinking about declining them. So I asked her, what's the worst thing that could happen? And she said, um, I could fail miserably and it would hurt my ego. And luckily, as soon as she heard herself say that, she realized her mistake and she ended up interviewing anyways. Okay, this is editing Jean. And as I was editing, I wanted to clarify one thing. I also asked her what would happen if you do get the offer. And she did clarify that even if she gets the offer, she would not take it because this is not an ideal job for her. And that is why I gave her the advice to interview anyways, because the best thing that could happen happen is she gets the offer and she rejects it and the worst thing that could happen is that she doesn't get the offer and she doesn't work there anyways so in either case scenario the end result is the same she would not take the offer in cases where you feel like it is your dream job if you don't get the offer you would feel devastated then i do recommend that you do delay the interview but in case you're not interested in the company anyways this is the advice you want to think of those interviews as free mock interviews. Instead of paying a mock interview coach, you get to practice interviewing for free. So always go into your interviews with the mindset of, it's okay if I don't pass. This experience will still add up to help me in the future. And when you are preparing for these interviews, don't forget your soft skills. Just because you're a software engineer, it doesn't mean your technical skills are the only things that matter. Behavioral interviews are a big portion of your interview. If you fail those, you won't pass the interview as a whole. Behavioral interviews are one of the easiest things that you can prepare for. There's a set of questions that everyone asks. There's just really no excuse not to be ready for these questions. If you're not sure what these typical behavioral questions are, I'll have a link to my website where you can download them. And what is the best way to prepare for behavioral interviews? I say do it in front of a camera. Film yourself, answer the questions, and I promise you, you're going 
to learn so much about how to present yourself and answer these questions. Which leads me to my next tip. Stop neglecting your LinkedIn presence. A recent HubSpot study showed that 85% of applicants get their job through referrals. And the best way to network in the modern days is really through LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn is not perfect, but you really don't have much of a better alternative if you want to network online. So keep your profile updated. That's your experience. Profile photos, they should all be up to date. And the best time to update your profile is when you have updates. And the best way to land these interviews is through having great resumes. So stop using those generic resumes. According to the national average for software engineering jobs, you should be hearing back for interviews about one out of 10 applications. So if you're not landing any interviews, it probably means that you need to update your resume. I like to use ChatGPT to scrape the job descriptions so I can find the exact keywords that should be in my resume to tailor every single resume to the role. That's really the best way to get your resume screened and land those interviews. If you're not sure how to do this, I have a video on how to write an ATS-friendly resume, so check out the video right here. I'll see you there.